you've got one of the you've got the new redesigned Cosa Nostra in your car. I do, and that's on page eleven. Yeah. So basically, they decided that the more gun shape to it with the pointy tip and the pseudo swallowtail was just not as approachable. To be completely honest, I love the new shape. I think it looks really good, and I think that kind of more rounded pill shape, I think, is hard to get right to make it look good, but when you do, I think it looks fantastic. No, I agree so, with you. It, it looks good, and that wood top sheet looks good. It's a new style wood top sheet, too, that I was being told, so that it's it's supposed to be 30% lighter or some shit, but basically it's lighter, theoretically. Um, yeah, it's that. Made with real unicorn horn. Yeah! Uh, <laughs> I don't know. Uh, next up in the catalog is Crosscut. Yeah, page fifteen. Yep, which is budget A frame. Yes. Um, phenomenal feedback from people that have written this. So, and far. you so, have the option of camber and rocker. Yeah, camber it. and rocker with that so one, which you don't small, have the option with rocker in the A frame. So no, and it's got a small amount of taper to mm -hmm. it. So it's uh, that's good. You've have you written it yet? No, I didn't get on that one. I didn't okay. get a chance to. It, it looks it looks interesting. It comes in a shit ton of sizes between mm -hmm. the rocker and camber. I know they're gonna be putting a ton of marketing behind the that. The fact one. that the camber comes in a one seventy wide yeah. is funny. I know. Should we make should we make me ride that one? Why not? <laughs> I have no problem with that. I already that. rode the sixty five mid wide A frame. So it's true. Well, I mean, if people really want to look at the A-frame, they can go to page 18 mm -hmm. and check it out. It looks, that new graphic on that, that base graphic. It's just a looks, carryover. That's it, it, I know, but it still is just such a good. It's really good. It's solid for sure. Have you noticed more companies are starting to do carryover? Yeah, I think it's super smart. Because uh, then it doesn't mm -hmm. depreciate the whole in-season aspect of it. So yep. I would like, I would definitely like to see a lot of brands do that with more stuff, especially like their higher end, more free ride oriented stuff. that doesn't have the crazy, like in on trend graphics that there's just more mellow graphics, like make it two year. Right. It's just going to increase the value of the product. Um, annex annex. Yeah. Which is the progression of the Gucci. Right. And this I'm is excited new... about this. I think it's going to be a genuine free ride board. And I feel like, I mean, they introduced the a frame for this year, but that almost felt like more your Carver pow, than true free ride. It's a dentist board. Yeah. Um, and so I'm excited about this one. I've heard some good feedback on it as well. I got on it, but I got on it super early in the morning and it was really hard out and it, so I need to just ride it again. Cause I don't trust, I don't trust how I run it. I don't like is I see it's got the entropy bioresin and that makes me wonder if it's going to be durable. Yeah, I know. I would hope, I don't know. I mean, at least Arbor's using, it's still a wood top sheet on this. And yeah. That's going to add some durability to it because the resin is going to soak into the top sheet instead of just bonding to the underside of a plastic top sheet. True. So hopefully we don't see any DLAM issues because of just the nature of Arbor's construction. But yeah. yeah. And then with the Gooch graphic underneath. But I'm I'm looking forward, hopefully, to this being a true free ride board again from Arbor because I don't feel like they've had one for a while. Um, yeah, Gooch still in the line and Rocker Camber. There's the new Shiloh, which this is basically entry level. Or not Guy entry level. Blue. It is uh, budget coda. It's literally what it is. Which I don't even think they need to have a budget coda. No, I don't. I, um, if you want a budget coda, you get an element. Like That's what the element was really for, in my opinion. No, because the element was stiffer than the coda. It rode stiffer. It, the element was like a beefed up Westmark more than anything. But um, I love the element. But yeah, yeah. yeah like a softer... Like, Really? I just, I don't know. What don't... happened to the whiskey? Like, yeah, 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 okay, yeah, that's a much better, yeah, yeah. What happened to whiskey? Like, like that's what this is, is yeah, it? it's a it's fucking a whiskey. whiskey, which yeah. that first year whiskey fucking sucked. It was awful, because it had that sawdust core or whatever it was mm -hmm. that they put into it. So, those are really, because there was nothing new for women in that. No. And it, this is... Oh, big thing to note about the Shiloh is it's an Aaron Draplin graphic on there, so mm -hmm. all the fanboys can fan out because he used the same fucking color scheme that he uses on everything. And I, yeah, it's like when people freak out about Pendleton graphics. Yeah, I don't care. I don't know. I had an interesting chat one time with Draplin, and he's like, I quit snowboarding because I watched a dad yell at his kid, and I was like, this isn't snowboarding, and I just quit. And I was like, that caused you to fucking quit? What? 
Right. So it was the weirdest thing. And I was sense. just like, dude, if that's what causes you to quit because someone else is an incompetent father. Yeah. That's on you. And, you know, and he was like, I just don't like the way snowboarding's going. I was like, yeah, but you love making money doing those graphics for him. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't know. I feel like, I mean, he's a talented designer and everything, but at the same time, I feel like it, maybe the snowboard industry needs to get a little bit away from him. It's nothing personal. It's just, it's how many different companies can you do almost similar graphics with, you yeah. know? One thing I would say, I had a conversation with one of the Arbor dudes about this. The Wasteland yeah. needs to be 700 bucks, and just give us that fancy inlay die-cut top sheet that it used to have. Ooh, I'd be about that. Right. Like, you have Coda at just under six. You have A-Frame. You have Gooch. Like, you have boards at that little bullet right around or just over $600 price point. And you have plenty of boards in your line. It's not like you need the Wasteland in the line at all to be completely honest it it fills the expensive board zone yeah so make it expensive and give us a fancy top sheet we used to know the wasteland for like they, it always had the the most like stand off the wall graphics because it was real wood intricate inlays with like 100 pieces of inlays go back to that charge seven 750 bucks we sell 700 750 dollar lib techs all the time you can sell a $700 board. And those have tucked edges. And those have tucked edges. <laughs> and they don't look this pretty. So no. go back to doing the intricate top sheets. Just force your factory to do it. They can definitely do that. Yeah. The other thing to note, we should probably talk about the fact that Arbor is licensed out for shoes now. Yeah. That's weird. I know. Everyone was speculating that this was the kiss of death because they're just licensing everything and yeah. leveraging their name. I, I don't necessarily agree with it. Yeah. I think that they're just doing cash grabs where they can. Right. And I, don't, I don't know. Oh, the Zygote's out. Yeah, I saw that. The Zygote's out, but they dropped the price on the relapse to essentially fill that spot. So but it's not going to be that, soft. like 360 or something? It's 380, I want to say. 380? Yeah. And there is a new binding that's not in the catalog for some reason but they are making a unibody binding for next year really yeah they had a 3d printed um sample okay so i wasn't allowed to really flex it but i put hands on it so it's it's a thing it's going to exist it's just it'll as far as i know it's release. going to exist for next year but yeah we'll see could just be a late release yeah um you want to swing over into the fix catalog yep. and we'll talk about them. All that nonsense. Yes, the Canadian Union. Yes. Um, so Fix has a lot of just carryover more than anything from everything. They're still doing a bunch of stuff. Uh, the big thing with them is the new Yale binding, which is kind of a combo of the Truce and the Magnum, and that's on page 11. It's... Uh, you know, you look at the, mm-hmm. you look at the truce, and um, it's, uh, you know, you can kind of see where, is it page eleven? Maybe it wasn't page. Oh, uh, sorry, page twelve. My bad. But it's a two-piece construction, so yeah, you got the heel cup and the base, and then I think it's got the straps and some of the carryover from the truce, but it's like that kind of in the middle. Mm -hmm. And then the other thing is there's an Ashbury collab on page 23. And from what I was told, Jason, the owner of Fix, now owns a huge chunk of Ashbury. So that's kind of what's going on with Fix. Um, You know, the catalog, I mean... We've written their bindings. They have such a big footprint. They have a really big footprint. And... I had a lot of issues with the straps being mounted too low on the frame. Yeah, I remember you saying mm-hmm. that. And that everything, it just felt like the strap was on top of my foot instead of in my ankle. Yeah. Yeah. Well, such is life. Uh, mm-hmm. After fix, how about we check out one of the more try-hard companies out there? No bad day. Yeah. I wanted to go talk to him, but it was like bro central. And I was like, these guys are vibing me out from across the Freaking! They had some strong vibes pouring out of that tent for that was sure. Really weird. I maybe it's those vibes that vibed uh, the cancer in Max Perot. I don't know. Um, but 
the companies, so they've got a bunch of new models in there. There's um, the Crow, which is Max Perot's Pro model, but he's out for the year because he's fighting cancer, which sucks. Yeah. Cancer sucks. Not going to lie. Maybe it's those vi vibes weren't <laughs> posy enough for him. Um, yeah, so there's the Crow. Then, uh, which is page 12. I don't know. It's got a really dark graphic to it. Well, you know, he's got cancer. So. <laughs> True. Um, I'm probably going to get cancer and die. If I don't kill myself first. Um, let's see, what's next? Uh, then, I can't believe how many, their catalog was 84 pages long. Which, I was like... What? Yeah. Oh, shit. Yeah. Oh, because they've got all, like, the... The apparel. They have all those boards, and they have all the apparel. And they have bindings. They have kids' bindings. Yeah. Which is weird. Yeah. So then, the next one will be page uh, six... Or page 14. This is called The uh, Summer Braved. And it's a play on the... Brave, which I think was the year before. It's, I, I don't understand. Like they're saying, like they have summer releases or some shit, but it's a slightly set back directional board. Um, pretty sure. Good shape. Yeah, it's it's like it. camber plus flat top, which I'm pretty <coughs> sure it's like that camber 2.0 where it flattens out in there. Um, I don't know. It then after that is the doom. On page 16, which is asymmetrical twin. And I actually want to ride this one because I like the look of that shape, that slightly off kilter. Yeah. Blunt and. Then there's the Black Samurai, which looks, they, like, they an had, alpine, looks like an alpine board. It, it's a carving board for sure. They had <laughs> yeah. that. Um, if you go to page 23, though, you can see their bindings. These literally look like flux ripoffs, dude. Yeah, I mean, to they a really do to a T. These look like flux, like everything. The yeah, the buckle, shape of the high back, like. the high back, the well, the high back. It almost kind of looks like um, that one nitro binding, too. A little bit, but the cat fixators that the way that's cut out that looks like the DS. Yeah, right. Like straight rip off on the DS. Yeah. Yeah, dude, just, are they flux bindings? They look so much like a flux binding. Like even the tool is adjustments. Are like they're in the same spots. They had the same toggles. The the ratchets are different. Yeah, the ratchets are a little different. But do these fucking look like fluxes? Right. That's a. Hang and on. then yeah, right? dude, those are definitely flux straps. Oh yeah, hundred percent. Those are flux straps. Yeah. Those are flux frames. These are fluxes. Yeah, see? So they actually probably pretty good bindings. Yeah, the question is, like, what material they used in them. So True. Yeah. The shape is, yeah, the molds, whatever they're pouring their mold into is flux for sure. Right. I mean, looked at those a little closer. Like, those are definitely flux straps. Those are definitely flux frames. So those are probably flux highbacks. So as long as they're using not crappy materials, then they're good bindings because they're fluxes. They are fluxes, and flux does make... I gotta hit up flux, too, and be like, hey, send us shit. Yeah, definitely. Uh, let's see. Then shit on outerwear. Can oh, my go God. Go. It's like 20-something pages of oh, outerwear. I, I, I didn't even want to... I don't know, man. Why I, are they making outerwear? Because it's probably got a higher margin than the hard goods for them. I guess, yeah. So, uh, my roommate, like, Jordan, yeah, actually but... has one of their jackets, and he blew their seam. Like, it just obliterated it and i was looking at it i was like that's sh it was a single stitch seam oh jeez for a side piece for an anorak and i was like you can't you gotta be kidding me you gotta so, double at least yeah so oh let's see let's uh you want to go talk dc after this yeah let's do dc